we pledge an allegiance. This is Yahweh Allegiance, back at it again. Today I want to talk about the importance of obedience, right? There are many scriptures that talk about obedience. Clearly it's very important that we obey God's commands. Say, like we, we have many things that we're supposed to be in line with, right? Love your neighbor. You know, no cursing, no drink, no no drunkenness, not setting wicked things before our eyes. The list goes on and on. I don't want to just be uh, talking about all the different requirements of obedience. What's important about obedience is God is not looking for grudgingly o obeying him, right? So w there, there has to be the right attitude in obeying him. We don't. We don't obey him because we have to. We obey him. Yes, we do have to, but we obey him because we want to. We enjoy it. We're like, we know that it's good for us. So I want to pose a little analogy here, right? So you have, you as a parent, you have a child and you have two children actually. And one child is... A, you know, you could say he's a good child. He actually enjoys obeying you. You, you can tell him to do anything, any chore, and he does it happily because he likes to see his mom smiling, his dad smiling, and the praise that he gets when it's done. You know, he's sweeping, smiling. He's like, Mommy, look, look, look what I did. Dad, look what I did. He's washing the dishes. Hey, does it look good? It's clean, right? You know, he's so eager to uh, to listen to you. Then you got your other kid. They listen, but they only do it because they know they're going to be punished, you know? They they get over there, they start doing the dishes, and they got a screwed up face the whole time. They're taking out the garbage, you know, mumbling under their breath. And I know me, like, I'm going to have to slap you. You know, the Lord said, whom he loves, he chastises. So I got a couple scriptures to uh to read here. So the first one is second John chapter one verse six. And this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it. So that's love. For you to obey his commandments because you love him you obey and we do it with joy knowing that it is for our betterment and we're being built up into this image of Christ as we obey right because when you're giving your children things to do most parents they're telling their kids to do things that are good for them so that they can go out into society and be upstanding citizens beneficial to society right they go get jobs they can live on their own they can take care of themselves if you're a parent that doesn't do that what what do you have you have degenerates on the street who are terrorizing their criminals their slackers in the natural that's what happens so in the spiritual if our father wasn't uh looking out for us then we would just be devils. That's exactly what happened with Satan. He was in God's presence. He had all the, the splendor that God gave him, but he didn't obey God. And what happened? He became Satan. So if you're gonna abide in Christ and not obey his commands, you're gonna turn into someone who is undesirable in God's eyes. That's not a place that we want to be, right? Because now we're teetering on the brink of destruction. So the other scripture that I want to read is Hebrews chapter 12, verses six to eight. And it reads, for those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. 
some tra translations say chastises, and he scourges every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. So when I said it's like if, if, if my child is giving me an attitude as he's, you know, doing the dishes or whatever I told him to do, I might just have to slap him depending on the situation. I mean, the Lord's the same way, except it, it takes form in different ways. So he's going to chastise us based on our attitudes and how we're kept going about this life. And he goes so far as to say is it? If you're not being chastised, then you're illegitimate sons. You're not even a part of his family, right? So that would mean that we wouldn't see you in heaven if you are without chastisement. So whoever the Lord just lets go on their way and they seem to have the best of lives, even while leading a life of sin, and claiming Christianity, you can rest assured they are not a part of his family and they're just going to re reap the eternal destruction that awaits them in hell. If you happen to be one of those people who is not too fond of all the different things in scripture, all the rules that we have to follow, and it almost feels burdensome, then that's a problem, right? Because the Lord said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So whatever he's giving us, it should never feel like a daunting task. If that's you, I want you to reach out to God, ask him to, 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 to renew your mind and help you to grow so that you can enjoy serving him. And it brings you into new life. You get energy from him. Right? His burden, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I know that's something I, I gotta continually be going to the Lord for, giving me the right frame of mind as I go through life. Various circumstances can affect us and, and, and skew our view of God and make make us look at him in the wrong light. This ain't prosperity, but I want you to prosper.